What's up everyone, Chris here, and I'm going to be releasing a series of films that dive into a recent feature film that I was the DP on. Uh, it had an aggressive shooting schedule uh, over the course of only 15 days, and I believe it was a 93-page script, um, so pretty aggressive, uh, but we made the best of it. I had an amazing crew on board, um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. So... Um, We'll be walking through kind of like behind the scenes walk arounds or walkthroughs as well as showing you actual footage so you can see uh, what it looked like. So um, here we go. I'm going to start off by playing this. So this is a shot in uh, at a studio um, that had multiple kind of stages. Um, and so this first uh, one was... Um, a hospital and so right off the bat um you know as we walk around but i'll show you so that we've got an hmi joker um being shot through a four by four frame um of diffusion and we placed we placed a plant there just to kind of simulate it being outside or a window right because there's a gonna be there's a window right here um and so have negative uh, fill well it's not negative fill but it's more of just a solid so that way when we shoot out the window through this way uh, we see darkness as opposed to like this white wall um, so that was just done to cut this spill from this HMI um, and I believe we CTB that HMI as well to sort of simulate moonlight I think we had a quarter CTB on it um, so as we walk in through here basically our main actress is going to walk through these doors um, and then we've got a Kino 4x4, which is right up above here. So it's basically right as you walk in that door, there's a Kino 4x4. Um, and here's another 4x4 here. Um, most of, of, of this film, I always salt and peppered the Kinos. So there will be two tungsten globes and two uh, daylight globes. Um, I like to do that because it adds color contrast. It looks really great on the skin. Um, and then if I balance the camera right around like between 4,000 and 4,500, it just renders really nice skin tone. Um, and it allows those tungsten units, like if I'm using tungsten practicals, to go more towards the warm side. Because if you're if you have Kelvin temperature rating at around 4,500, then the the sources that are 3,200 or 2,800 really start to go warm. Um, and so I really like playing off of that, as well as if you are playing with sources in the 5,600 realm, those will go more towards the blue side. Um, so yeah, that's just something that I've always kind of got accustomed to um, when I'm using Kinos. It's just salt and peppering for interior work. And so again, we've got a Kino that's kind of right up above my head my head as I'm walking through the door and then another one um, there and then another one is is here just providing some frontal fill and you'll see as I show the frames what this looked like um, so as we kind of walk through here um, we basically just have Kino 4x4s everywhere and suspended above now this stage came pre-lit um, but we didn't pay for that because I, as we were doing the scouts, um, I was like, no, this is, I, I want to be able to control where they are. Um, and so, yeah, we just brought in our own lighting because it was a lot easier. Um, here's a Kino uh, two by four here. Um, again, salt and peppered uh, just as she enters the door. And then here's our main actress here along with our uh, male actor here. So again, we've got another four by four uh, up above one daylight bulb uh, hot one tungsten bulb hot um, and then there is this tungsten we're using that uh, existing tungsten practical that was just the regular hospital light and then you could see out here here's our window our hmi is pounding through that um that silk and then we've got that plant there as well um and so see you can see that tungsten practical i think we stuck some diffusion in there um just to knock it down because there was no way to control it really so i think we if memory serves me correctly we we uh threw some diffusion in there um we also have in in here in this like medicine cabinet there's like a pepper um uh just lighting up this interior space on a squeezer so on a dimmer 
um, just lighting up that interior space. And you'll see that um, as I show frames. And then we've got an all tungsten or two tungsten bulbs hot on this, um, and I think one daylight as well on this edge kino here. Um, so yeah, that's what that looked like in terms of the rigging and everything else. Um, and then let me play through some scene select. So in the grade, I just pushed it more towards the blue side. Um, and then uh, for this first scene, we just played off of that, um, that HMI. So we let that HMI do the bleeding here because it's we cut obviously um and so again we've got the kinos up above uh that hmi squeeze down um and knock down quite a bit and to create that slash as she comes in the frame um camera's low just to kind of uh, have some of the reflection off of the hospital tile and then as we enter the room this is a continuous shot so there's a door right here um that and the camera was on a movie. This was shot on the Epic MX, Red Epic MX. Um, and so there's a door right here, um, and that's where the camera goes through. But I'll let this play out. So here you can see just adding some specular highlights just adds depth because um, it was a relatively small room. Um, and you know, that top light, I just love top lights. Um, I think they render beautifully because, you know, light normally is from above. And so, uh, there's no bounce or anything going on right here. It's just, we're getting a little bit of return from, um, the bed, but not much. And so, um, yeah, I just love this frame. This was probably at an 85 or so, um, just to really compress things back there. But if we didn't have this specular, if we didn't light up that medicine cabinet, it would have just gone dark here. And then let me go back. Um, and so here, here's the wide shot. Again, I, I pushed things more towards the blue side just to, cause this was like a dream sequence. Um, and so you could see, you know, our HMI is out here, um, through that silk with the plant. So it looks like it's hopefully not a stage. <laughs> um, and then with this guy, this source here, again, I pushed everything more towards the blue cause it was a dream sequence, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you could see the light feels very believable. Um, you know, we've got that top Kino providing most of the room ambiance here. And then we have the keynote that's directly behind camera as well, up high. Um, and so, you know, again, I, I always try and light once. So for her close up, I didn't do anything. Um, you know, I always try and light for the wide and then potentially finesse on the close ups just, just to soften things up. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we go in for any of these, I, I'm not doing much. I'm not changing sources or anything like that. So yeah, there's that scene there. Um, now, as we move on to this next scene, this was a longer scene. Um, and it's supposed to be daytime uh, at a restaurant. And so this was shot at the same stage uh, in Orange County. Um, and so we knew that we needed to be recording in this restaurant for a good you know probably three plus hours or so and so whenever you have exterior windows um like this uh, i try and create coves because then we can actually control the light for an extended period of time so all around everywhere is basically black um and depending upon what type of sources you need to bring in to or you need to use to shoot is how big the cove needs to be um and so we use like tarp and i mean this was probably a uh, i don't know what tw not 20 but like a 14 or 12 by 12 by 12 so it was a decent size cove that we created using just all kinds of whatever we had right so we had some tarp we had some 12 by solids uh using some foam core here um just with a platypus and and so yeah i mean we essentially created a box outside and then we used hmis and whatnot to create our own daylight 
And so, and we're balancing them. So it feels very soft, but controlled. And especially like, cause we're shooting through glass here. So we had to be very careful with reflections. And so that's why black everywhere kind of helps with that. Um, and you can see the reds on a Movi here, Movi M10. Um, so as we, there's my camera operator, Jason Stroud. Um, and so, yeah, you could see everywhere is just black. Uh, there's some first AC, Nick and Ricky. Um, so, black everywhere and so we're just bouncing hmis and then it created this look essentially so we had this look for however long we needed um and so feels like we're looking out or from outside looking in we're shooting through glass um so you see no reflections or anything like that which is great that's the benefit of using black i think i also had a polarizer on as well um so just soft daylight. Obviously, we're playing off of uh, tungsten practicals on the inside. So you could see how her hair is going a little more towards the warm. Same with his here. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we're just uh, in here. So now we're inside, obviously. So you have the daylight coming from camera right. And you've got tungsten sources coming from camera left. Um, and so, yeah, I'll just let this play out a little bit so you could see. So again, just playing off of soft light, we really wanted it to be soft. Um, and I also love color contrast. And so, um, and then we have our uh, supporting actress come in, waitress. Um, and so again, uh, with color contrast, I'm always trying to play off of that. Um, and so here we are metered more towards the 5600 in terms of Kelvin. And so anything that's tungsten goes really warm. Um, and so that's why this is so warm here, right? So, uh, but again, typically inside restaurants are tungsten practicals. And so if you try and whenever you're shooting and, and DPing, if you try and look what's already there and, um, just try and play off of that if possible. Obviously, we killed all the all the uh, existing sources and we brought in our own, but we're playing off of what you typically see in a given environment. So it feels more believable. And this was like a 50s diner or something. And so, yeah, we just played off of that. Um, I do really like this shot, um, the wide shot. I just feel it adds depth. We added that table. Um, in there for the wide just again to help set the stage so to speak um in terms of uh feeling believable uh so yeah that's that scene um okay so this is um another location we didn't have long to set up and this was actually on the uh, on the second story up oh, sorry about that uh this was actually the second story so we had no way of controlling um, outside of these windows. So they had these shears and we obviously wanted to use those just to kind of cut down. We knew we didn't want to go all the way black because that just cuts all your depth. So um, with the red camera, I shot this sequence HDRX because the most powerful HMI that we had was a 1.2K HMI and outside was just nuclear. And a 1.2K HMI is not even going to touch outside uh, in terms of matching that exposure so with the shears and there was no tin on the windows either so with the shears that helped knock it down a little bit but i was like okay we're not going to have enough output and we didn't want it to go completely nuclear um, and so we just rolled hdrx just for this scene just to help maintain a little bit more dynamic range into the outside um, and again, salt and pepper four by four Aquinos. Um, and so you got one there. We've got another one right up over here. And then we've got an HMI uh, with CTO just to really kind of warm it up um, and kind of like it's sunlight coming in um, on our main actress here sitting down on the couch. Um, so, yeah, so that's so basically two Kino four by fours, and then we had the HMI with CTO. I think that's the Joker eight hundred there. Um, so yeah, let me fast forward here to, and this is the scene here. So uh, everything was shot on the movie again, uh, just to provide a little bit of organic movement. Um, this entire film was shot on the movie. Um, so here, going through foreground elements, I always like to add depth whenever possible. Um, and so again, you can see sort of, you could sort of see out there. Um, the shears are helping add some depth 
um, because if, if that was just pure white, and, and you could see, so disadvantage of shooting HDRX. So you could see right along here that there's some sort of like ghosting because what HDRX is doing is it's recording two simultaneous tracks and it's blending them. And so um, we could have probably spent more time in cleaning this up, but it's so fast and through movement, it's not like you have to really be looking for it. Um, and it wasn't that bad. And again, so you could sort of see out there, you could see trees and whatnot, but again, uh, we're playing off of warm here and then cooler here. Um, so advantage of, of um, shooting right around 4,500 Kelvin is we get this, right? And so it just, it makes your talent look better. It adds color contrast and depth, and it just has a really nice look. So we have the daylight, which is uh, a daylight source with CTO, on it, but it feels very warm. And then this is also daylight here, providing this bluish or more cooler edge. And then you have the Kinos providing the fill, the salt and peppered Kinos providing this fill. So it feels very believable. It feels like, oh, this is just, this is just ambient spill. Um, and that's what we try and go for is the less you augment, um, the better. Um, and so I try and use as few sources as possible whenever possible, just to kind of help with that. Um, and so again, whenever with HDRX, it's a great tool, um, but you have to use it sparingly because again, you will get, whenever you have the movement between the high contrast scenes, like when you, so you have a subject against a very high key background, you will get that because that's where it's doing the most work. So you don't see any of that edging going on here because it's not really blending that, right? So you, you've got this high key here and then you have the, the darker subject here. And so you will get some of that artifacting again for special circumstances. It's great. See, it's not bad here, uh, cause she's better exposed. And so you're not really seeing a lot of that into the hair. Um, so again, you know, I used it for this cause it saved us. Um, and it made this actually like decent back there. Cause you can see cars moving and stuff. If we didn't roll HDRX, that would have just been more towards the nuclear side, even with a high dynamic range camera, like the red. So that's that scene. Okay. So this is a interior scene. Um, we've got that HMI being shot through a double, I believe. And then we've got a Kino two by four, again, salt and pepper. So whenever you see the orange, that's tungsten globe, the blue, that's a daylight globe, um, suspended again, right above talent. And then all right over here, we've got another Kino. I think that's a two by four as well. Um, and that, I believe I just had, uh, tungsten globes in there for a warm push. Um, and then outside we've got that HMI. So three lights, three point lighting. <laughs> um, but you'll see that, see that HMI jokers being shot through. Oh, it looks like I've got it going through like an opal or something as well as, oh, and this doubles just to cut extra light coming in. Cause I really wanted to, cause with these windows, uh, we didn't want to block out everything with these curtains. Um, and I don't think that sliding glass door had anything to be honest. Um, and so we needed to cut spill from light cause light was just bouncing around everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, they only had these shears, which wasn't cutting it down. And that was really wonking out our color. So we were selective, I was selective in where I wanted to kind of control and shape everything. Um, so you'll see here, even with all those windows and whatnot, um, the room still feels like it has shape. Um, and so again, warm source here, cooler up top, and then you've got the daylight coming in. Um, and so as you see, we'll go into the close up here and you can see that, um, let me fast forward here. So again, you've got color contrast. Um, and so color contrast is amazing. I always try and add it whenever I can, um, in anything that I do, cause it just does so much for the scene. Um, and so again, you know, on the Movi panning down and t panning and tilting and whatnot. So, um, yeah, just tried to add m motion and movement to the scene cause it was a not continuous, but, um, we just wanted to put it, put you more in the scene. And so here again, you can see 
it feels very believable and that okay he's being hit from something there's probably a top light here which is believable because you're in a uh, family room or a living room or whatever um and again we're just pushing that daylight from these windows as her key top but also with that top kino there it's providing some nice top light down um so yeah this was a quick scene uh, okay so this one i unfortunately i don't have any actual behind the scenes footage um but i'll just let this scene play out so again we're we're playing off of color contrast um we've got uh, kino i believe providing the moonlight out here we're playing off of this uh, desk practical um and yeah we've got two kinos basically so we've got one over the desk which is i believe i only had the daylight globes um hot so to speak and then over the couch i only had the tungsten globes hot so again color contrast where sometimes um i had it directly over talent where you had daylight and tungsten but in this i wanted to to kind of play off of because he was looking at a screen um here and so I wanted to play off of, okay, he's watching some content and he's got his desk lamp here, which is more towards the cooler side. And so overhead, he's got the, the, the daylight bulbs and then over the couch is, is the tungsten. So you can see as this plays out. Again, color contrast, we still have some depth here. This outside this is, so this is a stage again. So outside here is fake. <laughs> so again, we use the plant. Um, but again, we have color contrast through the scene. So we have cooler over here and we have warmer on this side. Uh, but again, so you see some bleed here. So you see some warm push into his side of the space. And then you've got that cool. We had another Kino um, outside of this door that's over here edging him. So again, we have scene continuity between or lighting continuity. So that way you feel, okay, they're in the same space, but there's also some contrast and color contrast going on. Okay, so here is probably, um, this can show you the power of top lighting. Um, whenever possible, I always try and top light just because I love the way light looks and falls on the face. Um, and so here, all we have is a salt and peppered 4x4 Kino, and it's been skirted and it's also being shot through diffusion. And then we've got uh, a Kino outside, um, all daylight, outside providing some moonlight or daylight I don't, don't, yeah daylight um and then we also have a kino over here um that's just pounding off of this wall and all that's doing is that's just bringing up some room ambience and play off of this so you can see that the shadow right that lamp would not generate that shadow um, and so we're just pushing some warm light over in this corner and you'll see it once we get to the frames but um yeah, so we're going, I think it's, I don't remember if this is daylight or, yeah, it's it's nighttime. So again, there's that Kino, that's a two by four there, tungsten only on that. Um, this light's not, that pepper right back there is not doing anything uh, for this scene, because there are multiple scenes in this given space. Um, but you could see here, push the grade more towards the warm. Um, but again, this is only that Kino at mainly providing all of what you're seeing here um and so that's the other thing whenever you're able to light from above you have so much more freedom in where the camera points because if lights are suspended from above then oh and there's also we stuck we i don't know if this was like one of those baby light yeah so uh my gaffer had some baby little light mat things so we just stuck those under battery powerable light mats just underneath the um the actual cabinet just again if those weren't there it'd be fine but it adds depth so you could see better separation between uh actress and that background so here's that wide shot so again that lamp would not be pushing that shadow but it, we just wanted to kind of warm that up there um and so yeah, I mean, this is, again, that Kino top light is doing all of this, um, and and it just looks very believable, and um, yeah, I just really like the look. And the grade, obviously, pushes more towards the warm, too, so um, yeah.
Okay, moving on to the next one. Um, so this next scene, we had so many scenes in this space, in this like boardroom. Um, and so it was on the second floor or third floor or something. And so we didn't have access to these outer windows. Um, and I don't have behind the scenes for this, unfortunately. But um, so we didn't have access to these. So there was like this... Um, like ramp over on this side like kind of a ways away that went straight um and so what we did was we put an hmi on that ramp and shot it through this window here so that's why this window is brighter brighter than this but it was also providing this daylight spill on this table and on our main actor here uh we also had kino uh two by twos tungsten on the floor on each side so you'll notice as we go into the close-ups you'll see that 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 provides um color contrast as well as uh subject background uh, separation uh we had an hmi i believe it was the joker 800 pounding off of four by four foam core over here on this left hand side so that's basically kicking up this way and bouncing back um, and then we also had a kino i think it was a kino it may have been another hmi but i think it was just a kino suspended up over here just to kind of push room ambience. Um, so you can see as this scene plays out, um, so three lights, well, oh no, two, three, four lights, um, relatively quick to set up. Um, and yeah, you can see, again, color contrast um, helps because we've got some warm tones. That's from those Kinos. This up here, I believe was an existing tungsten unit we killed all the other house house lights so to speak but i think they had one up here if memory serves me correctly we may have put a small tungsten source up here for that um but again so we're metering in the you know i think the here we are more towards 5,000. um and then again so the close-up so with this kino back here actually i think it was a salt and pepper kino looking at the color so this provides just a nice separation between talent and background if that wasn't there then it just kind of goes flat um and it just looked kind of stark and so i was like okay we need something there we need some depth color depth there um and so salt and pepper kino on the floor and boom you have this nice glow um which just it looks nice um you don't know where that light necessarily is coming from but it just uh, I think it looked great. <laughs> so um, again, tungsten or uh, that uh, kino on the floor um, is just providing some nice again uh, kino on the floor, providing some nice color separation, especially in that two shot there. Um, and so you know, for our main guy here, he's being edged by that HMI, but also uh, he's got that HMI bounce from over here. And then on this side, where that's specular, that's from the uh, Kino. Um, again, just having nice uh, ratios in terms of shadow and key side as well. Okay, uh, so outdoors uh, are sometimes some of the most challenging shooting environments because you are limited, especially with a smaller crew. Um, I think the biggest frame that we had was a 12 by. And so um, and this was like at high noon or something. Uh, so the sun was the worst uh, it could possibly be but because of shooting schedule and when we had to be there you know this is kind of what we were given so fortunately there were uh, several trees tree pockets right that were there that provided shade and so we're like okay we can use that to our advantage somewhat control the the horrible um sun because the sun was like one o'clock or two o'clock so very high in the sky you could see from where these trees are getting hit that it's still very high um, and so we use the trees to our benefit to create shape and to create contrast yeah i'm bouncing like if you're paying attention to back here yes i'm bouncing some sun front with a shiny board or a mirror um, from this side and kicking and edging her and him 
Would that be there? Probably not, but that's if you're paying attention to back here. Um, and then we're also, we had another shiny board being shot through um, like a four by uh, diffusion to provide some frontal fill for all, basically on the left side, the camera left side. So here, 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 and on her here. Um, but again, we're getting shape, we're getting, you know, um, contrast. This was just with an ultra bounce here, kicking that return up into him so it's nice and soft. Um, so again, you know, you got to try and what can you use to help create shape and whatnot? Because if they, we stuck them out in the middle of the, of the, the lawn essentially, and, and, uh, did a 12 by, well, 12 by is not going to cover this many people. Um, it just becomes difficult and you're using a lot more modifiers. We just use shiny boards and called it a day and we got a nice look. I mean, I think it looks, it looks pretty good. You know, you have nice contrast. It's believable. Obviously we're using a lot of ND as well. Um, but it feels okay. That's believable. You know, you got some speculars going on and that's just sunlight coming through the trees. Um, and so, yeah, we were happy with this look. We didn't have long at this location. Um, and so, yeah, we tried to make the best of it. And then here, so this is more believable because the sun's coming from that direction. And so we're mirroring, um, we're bouncing light from the sun directly and edging them as they're looking back. And there was no flip. It was always just over the shoulder. Um, and so, and with some negative fill, I believe we had on camera side just to get some contrast here. Um, but yeah, that was that scene. Um, so yeah, this is the first of a series of films that I'm going to be doing, um, just to kind of show you guys inside, look at the lighting, um, and how I like to light. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed and yeah, I'll upload something else next week. Thanks so much.